I felt myself drawn, as if by a magnet, toward Shiraz. And as I stood outside that city's gate, a youth approached me. I was overwhelmed with his gentle expressions of affection and loving kindness. He extended to me a warm invitation to visit his home and refresh myself after the fatigues of my journey. He bade me follow him. I was profoundly impressed by the gentle yet compelling manner in which that strange youth spoke to me. As I entered the house and followed my host to his chamber, a feeling of unutterable joy invaded my being. It was about an hour after sunset when my youthful host began to converse with me. Whom, after Sayyid Kazim, he asked me, do you regard as his successor and your leader? At the hour of his death, I replied, our departed teacher insistently exhorted us to forsake our homes, to scatter far and wide in quest of the promised beloved. I have accordingly journeyed to Shiraz, have arisen, to accomplish his will, and am still engaged in my quest. Has your teacher, the Bab further inquired, given you any detailed indications as to the distinguishing features of the promised one? Yes, I replied. He is of pure lineage, of illustrious descent, and of the seed of Fatima. As to his age, he is more than 20 and less than 30. He is endowed with innate knowledge. He is of medium height, abstains from smoking, and is free from bodily deficiency. He paused for a while, and then with vibrant voice declared, Behold, all these signs are manifest in me. When I first started upon my quest, I determined to regard two standards as those whereby I could ascertain the truth of whosoever might claim to be the promised one. The first was a treatise which I had myself composed, bearing upon the abstruse and hidden teachings propounded by Sheikh Ahmad and Syed Kazim. Whoever seemed to me capable of unraveling the mysterious allusions made in that treatise, to him I would next submit my second request and would ask him to reveal without the least hesitation or reflection a commentary on the Surah of Joseph. I was revolving these things in my mind when my distinguished host again remarked, Observe, attentively, might not the person intended by Syed Kazim be none other than I? I thereupon felt impelled to present to him a copy of the treatise which I had with me. Will you, I asked him, read this book of mine and look at its pages with indulgent eyes? He graciously complied with my wish. He opened the book, glanced at certain passages, closed it, and began to address me. Within a few minutes, he had, with characteristic vigor and charm, unraveled all its mysteries and resolved all its problems. He then proceeded to say, now is the time to reveal the commentary on the Surah of Joseph. He took up his pen and with incredible rapidity revealed the entire Surah of Mulk, the first chapter of his commentary on the Surah of Joseph. The overpowering effect of the manner in which he wrote was heightened by the gentle intonation of his voice which accompanied his writing. Not for one moment did he interrupt the flow of the verses which streamed from his pen. I sat enraptured by the magic of his voice and the sweeping force of his revelation. I sat stunned and feeling the galling weight of guilt for having even thought of setting forth tests, which the Bob so effortlessly dispatched. He turned to me and smiled lovingly, bathing me in the warmth of his light and blotting out for that instance my shame. He then addressed me in these words. This night, he declared, this very hour will in the days to come be celebrated as one of the greatest and most significant of all festivals. O thou who art the first to believe in me, verily I say I am the Bab, the gate of God, and thou art the Bab ul Bab, the gate of that gate. Eighteen souls must, in the beginning, spontaneously and of their own accord, accept me and recognize the truth of my revelation. Unwarned and uninvited, each of these must seek independently to find me. And until that number is complete, it is incumbent upon you, 
not to divulge either to your companions or to any other soul that which you have seen and heard. This revelation, so suddenly and impetuously thrust upon me, came as a thunderbolt which for a time seemed to have benumbed my faculties. I was blinded by its dazzling splendor and overwhelmed by its crushing force. Excitement, joy, awe, and wonder stirred the depths of my soul. Predominant among these emotions was a sense of gladness and strength which seemed to have transfigured me. How feeble and impotent, how dejected and timid I had felt previously. Now, however, the knowledge of his revelation had galvanized my being. I felt possessed of such courage and power that were the world, all its peoples and its potentates, to rise against me, I would alone and undaunted withstand their onslaught. The universe seemed but a handful of dust in my grasp. I seemed to be the voice of Gabriel personified, calling unto all mankind, Awake! For lo, the morning light has broken. Arise, for his cause is made manifest. The portal of his grace is open wide. Enter therein, O peoples of the world, for he who is your promised one is come. 